Karen Jeffrey Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today we are going to discuss general purpose operating system versus embedded systems. So guys, uh, I have already uploaded a video about the introduction to embedded systems. Okay, so what are embedded systems and what are the characteristics and everything about embedded system? Already there is a, my video about it. I will leave the link of the video in the description section. Okay, so guys, now in this video tutorial, we are going to discuss why general purpose operating systems are not suitable for embedded systems so we are going to discuss two points why general purpose operating system now all of you know what a general purpose operating system like linux windows and all, all these are general purpose they can be applied anywhere to run any type of application so why such operating systems are not suitable to be used as embedded system and number two so what are the requirements of a hardcore embedded system okay so in this video tutorials we are going to discuss two points number one why general purpose operating systems are not suitable to be used as embedded systems and what are the requirements for a embedded system so guys for the full video all of you stay tuned okay guys okay so our first point is why general purpose operating systems are not suitable for embedded applications okay so guys here i wrote both of the operating systems here is the general purpose operating system and here is the embedded operating system and here i wrote some points on which they both differ okay the first thing is the general purpose operating systems are very strict on the hardware requirement okay now these days most of the operating systems which we use most of them work either on 32 bit machines or 64 bit machines okay so they are very strict on the hardware requirements so they need a big and a lot of hardware okay to run okay and they may need more ram nowadays most of the general purpose operating system at least they need back from a search. at least they need four gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so then most of the general purpose operating systems are designed in such a way that they are suitable for most of the applications. Majority of the applications they can run on a general purpose operating system without any modifications. As compared to general purpose operating system, now we have embedded systems. So first of all, unlike general purpose operating system, the embedded systems they have limited resources embedded system has limited resources whether it is processing power whether it is memory or whether it is ram so always they run on a very very limited resources okay and guys on the second point like general purpose operating systems they can support wide variety of applications which is not the case with the embedded system so no single embedded system can fit into all the applications so our embedded systems will differ depending upon the application to application the embedded system will also change according to the application so no single embedded system can be used for multiple applications okay so guys these are the points where the general purpose operating system is not suitable for the embedded applications okay now guys in the next part of this video we will discuss what are the requirements for a special embedded system so when we talk about a special embedded system or when we talk about a purpose-built embedded system so what are the different requirements for a purpose-built embedded system and guys here are some of the requirements for custom-built embedded system the first requirement is input output device flexibility so guys the embedded system they has to support a large variety of input and output devices okay so they have a lot of flexibility for input and output devices okay and embedded systems have limited protection mechanisms okay so like unlike general purpose operating system so we always divide the instructions these are the privileged instructions these are the semi-privileged instructions 
unlike that embedded systems okay has very limited protection mechanism okay why because they are designed for limited and well defined task okay so they 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 are designed in such a way so they have to perform a very limited amount of well defined a clearly defined tasks again and again okay so and on embedded system untested programs they really they are rarely installed on them okay always the programs which are installed in embedded systems are highly tested okay and any untested okay are pro programs are most of the case are never installed on the embedded systems okay and then on embedded systems the input output can be performed directly by the device without involving the operating system in general purpose operating system most of the input output functions are provided with the support of operating system which is not the case with the embedded system okay and no untested program is ever installed on a embedded system unlike general purpose operating system so which can run the any of the applications whether they are tested or they are not tested okay and the embedded system they support a huge variety of input output devices now guys the next requirement which comes for embedded system is reactive operations now guys what do you understand by reactive operation in embedded systems the most of the operations are reactive by reactive it means like they respond to some external event so when some external event happens the embedded system responds to that external event and such operations which are performed in response to some event are called as reactive operations okay so they are always in response to some external events they can occur periodically or they can occur at predictable intervals for example if we have a system embedded so which can take the temperature of a room or of a, of a place after every 2 hours okay so when every 2 hours finishes automatically it reacts okay and it takes the temperature after a periodic interval okay so what is such operations are called they are called as reactive operations and embedded system operations are more or less they are performed in real time now what do you understand by real time in embedded systems so we have a very strict time requirement okay we have a very strict time constraint on the result so the system must generate the result in some fixed period of time so what do we call it we call it as real time operation we call it as real time operation and guys real time operations are of two type one is soft real time other one is hard real time so in soft real time so we are can be little flexible about how much time it may take to generate the result we are slightly flexible on it but whereas we have a hard real time systems so on this the timeliness is most important no compromise on the time the system must generate a result in a specific amount of time so what do we call it we call it as hard real time so no matter hard or soft the embedded systems are expected to perform the operations in real time and guys the last requirement which comes for a purpose built purpose built operating embedded system is direct use of interrupts now guys now what happens in general purpose operating system okay the operating system never permits a user process to use our interrupt directly never ever okay so what happens in general in general purpose operating system the user process is never allowed to use a interrupt directly but in case of purpose built embedded system now before also we discussed all the application programs which run on the embedded systems are thoroughly tested before we install them on the systems okay and after we have installed them there is no changes or no mod modifications on them 
okay so where in purpose built or embedded system so whatever the applications are installed on them so before installing they are thoroughly tested and after they have been installed so there is no modifications on them okay so in that case it is possible for the user programs to use the interrupt directly okay so in general general purpose operating system the user processes they cannot use any interrupt but, but wherever whereas in embedded system the user processes they can use the interrupts directly for example for example guys like uh, one of the example of embedded system was your microwave once you have set the timer and microwave is running according to what you have set so in case you want you can interrupt that operation you can cancel that operation and you can reset it that wherever point at whatever point you want so what is this this is an example of journal direct use of interrupts it is an example of direct use of interrupts so guys these were some of the few requirements for the embedded system so in this video tutorial we discussed what are the required why general purpose operating systems are not suitable for embedded systems and what are the requirements for the embedded systems which are different than the general purpose operating system so guys i hope i made myself clear to you so if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more and more videos related to it topics like system analysis and design advanced operating system operating system and so on so guys all of you thanks for watching and all of you stay tuned